Hey guys, welcome back to Preview Alliance Podcast. It is Sarah and Whitney, and we are still in our holiday series. Whoop, whoop. So we have conquered Thanksgiving by now. Yay! One holiday down, uh-huh. a million to go, it feels like still. The month of everything. Yes, all the things. All the things. My husband, he was literally like, how many things do we have this week? And I'm like, yes. It's a lot. We're doing basically a year of activities in a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We really like to just smush them in in the first 23 days of December. This really puts the joy of the season. It does, right? (laughs) Well, today's is something that I think is going to resonate with all of us. Oh, yes. Like the perfect Christmas card. (laughs) So I'm going to tell myself, we're not doing Christmas cards this year. Yeah. We're not because when was it going to happen? And let's backtrack. Whitney, as I think we've hinted, her life's been a little um, crazy crazy, and she's had loss this season Uh and sicknesses. And I feel like it all started at Labor Day because my husband got Uh COVID Labor Day weekend. So, you know, solo parenting, doing all of the things. And that is also when my grandfather's health started to decline pretty rapidly. Mm -hmm. Not at that time, but it was starting to decline. Then his stepfather's health was starting to to decline pretty rapidly at that time. Both of them, let's see, his stepdad was placed on hospice care mid to late September. And then my grandfather, they made the decision for hospice care first week of October. Yeah. Um, And then, God love it, both my parents got COVID for taking care of my grandfather while he was in a rehab type facility. And then he was in hospice care for a week. Passed away, and then both, I mean, literally, we got home from the funeral, and my five-year-old popped a fever. Yeah, I remember that. And then so she got, she ran a fever for five days. Turns out adenovirus is a thing. It's such a thing this year. So turns out it's a thing. Did not know about that virus before, but here we go. It's a thing. So as soon as she gets fever-free and is good to go to school, literally that same afternoon, my two-year-old popped a fever at daycare and had strep. So Yay. Yay, that was fun. The text conversation was between me and Whitney. I was like, no, this is not. What? (laughs) What now? It's like, Sarah, guess what happened now? Here's a picture of us in urgent care Uh again uh for the third time in a week. So I think this is just good for our listeners to know, like, we are not living these magical (laughs) unicorn lives. No. When we're telling telling you guys the stuff, it's because we've lived it. We're yeah. experiencing it. It's oh, real yeah. live action that's oh, occurring. Yeah. Please do not feel that me as a therapist or Sarah as a professional or you're a therapist, whoever you see, has it all together because we don't. No. As professionals, we don't really bring that up in sessions because it's an ethical boundary. Yeah. We can say that we empathize or that we understand due to losses or, you know, craziness, having kids, whatever. But we can't bring up all of that personal stuff in a session because it's an ethical boundary. Right. But this being a podcast, we can a little share. bit different. We can share. We get the insider scoop of it. That's Whitney. right. Y'all get to hear the dumpster fire that has been my life for three months. You know, and I think that's a good point to bring up too is so we all are getting these beautiful Christmas cards. Oh, yeah. And I love looking at the Christmas cards. Oh, yeah, I'm they're like, great. Oh, wait, look at so-and-so's kid. They've grown yeah. oh, now. They're pregnant now. Whatever. Yeah. But why do we put so much pressure on ourselves about these Christmas cards? Well, I think comparison is a thief of joy. Yes. So think about it like this. Instagram, Facebook, um, maybe not so much TikTok when it comes to Christmas cards. But social media as a whole is meant to make us compare our lives to others. Mm -hmm. It is highlight reels that we've talked about before. No one really shares the nitty gritty, ugly side of life on social media. No. And if they do, it's a little snippet of it. It's not, you know, this in-depth, like all the details kind of thing. So we look at these really pretty Christmas cards and these people with their coordinating outfits and all smiles, all, yeah, all smiles. Their kids aren't having a tantrum on camera, all the things. And we look at that and think, man, I wish I had just a little bit of that. Oh my gosh. Or I feel like it may be, this happened to me yesterday and I love this family I got the Christmas card from yeah. and it was, inc- it looked beautiful. I mean. And I'm just like, how has that mom got it together already and, you know, send it out. Yeah. And I, I, it was one of those moments where it, it was a day where I was kind of just getting tapped out myself. Mm-hmm. And I think it just was like a, 
it was a vulnerable time. It was a vulnerable, vulnerable time day. moment, but you're just like, how, am I the only person who does not have my crap together? And it's like, oh no, I don't either. It's and okay. you know, and we're it, in but, the same boat. But it brings it to you yes, like that, right? And then it's like, then I was talking to Bill about, it and I'm like, yes, I put way too much pressure on myself mm-hmm. about the coordinated outfits or what choosing yes. the best photo, and it's like, what per what perfection thing am I fighting here? Some of that is, again, that comparison thing that social media truly perpetuates. Some of it is personality. Yeah. So, again, you have a nursing background. So, nurses already just have high expectations placed on them for their jobs. Mm -hmm. You're having to maintain two to three, four patients, possibly more now just with staffing issues that I've heard about. But you also have to be mindful of, okay, well, they had X surgery, so they need pain medicine and an antibiotic and blah, 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 blah at this time. And then so-and-so needs this. Like your brain is almost a literal catalog of all of those things Mm -hmm. that inherently comes with that profession. So when you have professions like nursing, teaching, social work, especially your helping professions where you're having to manage multiple things at once and the expectation is high, we do that to ourselves. Oh, yeah. We self-impose those high expectations. And I'm not saying that we should, you know, have always low expectations of ourselves, but we don't need to have unrealistic expectations of ourselves. And Christmas cards are one of those that, you know what, we can set the bar low. You know, there was- We absolutely can. I'll tell you this, when we had miscarried, um, Mm -hmm. our first miscarriage, and- that holiday season was incredibly hard for me. Oh, yeah. And I did not want to send out a Christmas card. And yeah. then I felt like maybe I should. I'm like, I feel like yeah. in my mind, that was going to be an announcement photo. Exactly. That's what you were preparing for. So you were in a season of grief and uh-huh. loss as opposed to joy, excitement. And I'll be real things. honest. Getting those Christmas cards that year with people's kids hurt. Yes. I cried. Oh, I didn't want to see it. Yeah. I was not kind about it. I was just like, I can't. That's where you were. And I remember Bill was just like, why does that bother you? And I'm like, because we're, but I'm supposed to be pregnant. Yeah. Like this was. I'm supposed to be in that picture. Yes. Our child is supposed to be with us in uh that picture. And so it was like this reminder Mm -hmm. of what other people were having when I didn't have. Yep. And then. Constantly in your face. Constantly. Then now that I have. You know, we've walked this road. I have mm-hmm. two healthy, wonderful boys. Yes. I'm comparing myself to other moms and how they look mm-hmm. in this car. And I'm just like, and let's talk about the photo shoots here for a minute. <laughs> we haven't done one this year, but yet I empathize because we've done them in the past. And I have the best photographers ever. Yes. So I usually use Whitney Carr and she's okay. local to Birmingham and Rachel Bond for like our family photos. Those two are my go-tos. And they're the most patient con women in the world. Oh, yes. And they're moms. They get they it. They get it. They're in. They get the shot. And it's like, it's not them that makes yeah. anything. It's me. I do not like the person I become getting my family ready. It is hard because our kids, because of their ages, let's keep that Uh in mind, that frontal cortex is not developed, that executive functioning is not there. Yeah. It is so insanely stressful for us because we're like, go get your shoes. Okay, go get your shoes, please. And we say that about 20 times and then we finally lose it and they're like, where are you mad? Don't tackle they, your brother with a sucker and put it in his hair when we're trying to get out the door and you have your <laughs> that's not matching based on Christmas, real life stories, right? Matching Christmas sweaters that's going to look so great, but now we have a sucker in the hair and it's like after I've told him like you said 50 times mm-hmm. about the shoes. Yep. And then Lord love my husband getting ready in that process too. We're going to have a me and him going to have a moment. We've never not Oh, so you know it's coming. It's just I know part it's of coming, the- but it's because I'm so like on a level. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I hate to say, there's almost no amount of preparation and planning that can make that go smoother because no. kids are unpredictable. No. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. You could get up at 4.30 that morning and get yourself ready. Uh-huh. It still does not expedite the process with no. the kids. No. So I had to, you know, I love the pictures. I will yes. always cherish pictures. If you know me, I'm going to get pictures done. My friends yes. now know they're like, Oh, of course, you're having a photo session. Yeah. Yes, I am. And I constantly uh-huh. will torture myself and my family to get these photos. Oh, yes. Because mm-hmm. you want to be able to look back when they're yes. older. 
But do when I look back, am I going to be like, oh, that was the most beautiful moment? Or am I going to be like, I remember that. Me and Bill. It's a little bit of both. Had a, you know, had a highlight moment real there. Yes. You know? <laughs> no. So I think that's important just to say to everybody. Mm-hmm. It's like, maybe there is those unicorn moms that are yep. like, no, the photos go beautiful. I mean, maybe they have those moments. They have yeah. unicorn moments. Um, because as moms, we do have the occasional unicorn moments. Right. Yes. They're few and far between. Yeah. But we also savor them because we're like, oh, we have a unicorn moment. Uh huh. Let's take it in before yes. it goes away because it inevitably will. It will. We know this. And I think it's too, it's like controlling the uncontrollable. Yeah. I set my expectations wrong. Mm hmm. So, with that, I would say you know it's all going to come to a head at some point. Oh, I know it's going to escalate. So, with that, have your toolbox tools on hand. Yeah. The deep breathing. Yes. Tactile grounding. You know, find a candle, find some sanitizer, something like that. Breathe it in, take some breaths and say, okay, I feel dysregulated right now. Mm -hmm. I feel short-tempered right now. Okay, let me give myself 10, 15 seconds. Okay, now I can jump back in. Yeah. And just, I think it was, um, I saw something, it's like life, it's not like a Hallmark movie. And I think that's a point to hit on too, is right now we're being bombarded Oh, with perfectionism and just these beautiful scenes. And I mean, we live in Alabama and Alabama is beautiful, but we're not going to get that winter Hallmark Christmas scene with snow. It's like 75 right now. But I'm here for it. I don't need cold weather. So I'm here for the 70s. After living in Boston for four years, I was like, I'm good for life. Yeah. No, I'm not here. I'm not made for it. If we have mamas that are cold weather people. That's a different kind of strong. It is. I'm not cut out for it. We lived in Nebraska for a little bit and it snowed on Halloween and I was like, oh, I need to go back home. Mm -hmm. I'm not here for this. I applaud those moms. Oh, heck yeah. I can't do it. To bundle your child up like that every every outing. Yeah. And to go play outside in the cold air. Mm, Yeah. mm -mm. No, I. Negative ghost rider. Not (laughs) happening. That's why we're in Alabama. That, yeah, oh, I will tell you absolutely. That's why I still live in the South. Now talk to us in the summer <clears throat> when we're sweltering in all the places that shouldn't yeah, swelter. Yeah, but I'm so conditioned to it. I'm like, it is what it is. See, I was pregnant during both summers, mm-hmm. and I was just like, same. This is a level. It's a new level. It's a of new misery. level. Pregnant that. Well, and I'm going to tell myself, I, you know this. I'm an enneagram type one. Me too. And I'm very type A. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what Super can fun. what can we do with perfectionism just in our day to day? Let's step outside of the Christmas card. Let's step out of the season. Okay. And what do we do when we feel like I need to be perfect as a mom? Well, realize that that is not realistic. It is not achievable. We can be good moms. Yeah. We can be great moms. We can meet our child's needs. We can't be perfect. Yeah. Nobody is perfect. It doesn't matter what their social media says. Any celebrity that you think, oh my gosh, they have it all together. Well, guess what? They have a nanny. They have a chef. They have a trainer. They've got a housekeeper. They've got all of these auxiliary assistants. That we don't have. That we don't have. We don't. No. And so remind yourself that no one is perfect. No one has it all together, but you are your child's mom for a reason. And you are a good mom and you are a great mom and a loving mom. And that is who your child needs. Your child doesn't need perfectionism because they're not going to be perfect. No, and and that's something. And that sets them up for failure too because they're going to have encounters daily throughout their life with imperfect people. Yes. Their parents. Exactly. Yeah. And so if we set this expectation of perfectionism up, we set our children up for failure because number one, no one can be perfect. No. Number two, if they expect others to be perfect, that's going to be a rude awakening. Or even themselves. Exactly. You're setting them up to be an anxious person. And really strong self-critic. Oh, absolutely. And that's... That's a huge part of Enneagram 1 is we do have this really strong inner critic that if we do anything wrong, it's like, well, why'd you do it like that? Yeah. What is wrong with you? Why would you ever think that that's the most appropriate way to do that? And that is the foundation of anxiety. Yeah. Perfectionism is rooted in anxiety and controlling things, but we can't control everything. And I think that um, 
Nobody can. I think what, too, growing up, I, you know, in school or even if you're out, you know, in the workplace before kids, Mm -hmm. you had measures of your work Mm -hmm. or you had your, you had a score report. Yeah. Motherhood, you don't have that. No. So you're kind of, and every day is different. Yeah, we're winging it. So I think, yes, I think that's one of the (laughs) things that I feel like, and that was a hard part that I'm looking back and realizing, I didn't have anything to say. Look, Sarah, you're doing a good job because it acts. Mm Mm-hmm. And that made it worse for me. Yeah. But what's really neat, though, is when we do have those moments, I'm seeing it more so with my five-year-old than my two-year-old because twos are terrible. Yes. And in our household, they are anyway. My five-year-old will come up and be and just say something to me that I'm like, oh, you were listening. You were paying attention. Like, Mm -hmm. how easily she'll just say thank you for something. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even prompt that. Because you're modeling it. Exactly. And so when we do those modeling things, what's important will come out. Yeah. So like I very rarely have to tell her, hey, say thank you for that. She just does it. And it's genuine. You know it's genuine from her. Yeah. I love that. What about, you know, one thing um, is mistakes. (laughs) Um, So again, going back to nobody is perfect. Mm Mm-hmm. We're all going to make mistakes. So realize in motherhood, we will make mistakes. Yeah. We're not going to get it all together. If it is a mistake of you lose your temper and you yell at your kid. It sucks. Let's yeah. call it for what it is. It sucks. But then we have the opportunity to go back and model conflict resolution. And repair. Yes, repair. We apologize. We own up to our mistakes. So our kids know Okay, mom and dad can make mistakes, but they also admit them. Yeah. They admit their mistakes. We We're not own above it. that. We yeah. Say own it in our family. Yeah. You know, let's own what mm-hmm. our words, our actions was. Yeah. We're not above making a mistake. No. And I think that's the whole, like, I'm supposed to be a perfect mom. I'm never supposed to yell. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to have my <laughs> kids dress a certain way. They're supposed mm-hmm. to eat a certain way. All these society telling us or us telling Mm -hmm. us from our childhood of like I want it perfect because maybe Mm -hmm. I had it this way and I want to do this different or Mm -hmm. I want to be like my mom yeah and that's a lot of pressure it is you it's a lot of unnecessary pressure so how do we let it go well again realize that we can never live up to everybody's expectations that's not doable but also with that We can't control what other people think of us. Yeah. We can't. I heard someone say, someone else's opinion of me is none of my business. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. So we are not responsible or accountable for other people's thoughts about us, their words to us, or reactions to our words. We are only responsible for ourselves. So if you feel like somebody views you poorly because you're not hitting all these perfect Christmas expectations, you haven't made the gingerbread house yet, or you haven't gone to go see Santa or whatever it is, well, who cares what they think? Yeah. Who cares? Because whatever they think of you is not your responsibility. And do you think that starts in childhood? Oh, 110%. Yeah. That some people learn it earlier than others. Mm -hmm. That's uh, people pleasing gets rooted in that pretty easily. Um, and so, and I am always a work in progress, but I've heard so many things talk about not to tell your kid that you're proud of them when they tell you they've done something good or that they get a green at school one day. The first thing you say is, are you proud of yourself? Yeah. So they're seeking their own internal approval and not external approval and validation. So that they feel confident in who they are. And exactly. And then we come in and say, I am proud of you too. That was a lot of hard work or those were some good choices. So that they're doing things for themselves and their mm-hmm. morals or beliefs. And, exactly. And that's something I don't think this generation of moms learned growing up. Mm-mm. And now we're trying to learn as we're parenting to be a mom. We are rewiring our brains. And that's such, I mean. It's hard. It's hard. And our kids are a mirror to ourselves of our childhood mm-hmm. of things that are wrong with us. Yeah. So that's why the perfectionism is hard too. Cause you're just like, yes. I'm working on myself or trying to be yes. the best mom. Mm-hmm. And that's exhausting and hard. Then you throw in a Christmas card. It's honestly the straw that broke the camel's back. So yes. to speak, it's like, it's just too much. And so again, this year we're not doing Christmas cards. Yeah. It's December 8th. 
And that's fine. And it's fine. No one's going to look back and say, I don't even know what day it is. Here you go. You didn't do the Christmas card. Yeah. How dare you skip 2022? Yeah. And you're like, 2022, I just wanted to be over. Oh, 2022 is worse than 2020, in my opinion. 22 has no more business being here. It can go on, and 23 better have some better sense. It will. It has to. What about, how can we talk about, you know, Will says this thing and his teacher does it. And it's like, I did my 4K best. What is a 4K best? So that means I've tried my best. I'm very proud of where Uh I'm at. So 4K as far as like pre-K kind Uh of thing? Okay, got it. Okay. And I think sometimes we have to look at each day and say, I did my best. Absolutely. I've seen, okay, so I know I kind of, you know, ragged on social media earlier, but I did see something that talked about if all you have to give one day is 50% and you give 50%, you've actually given a hundred percent of yourself that day. Oh, wow. Yes. You gave what you had that day. And every day we're not going to have the same. No, no. It's we're like not. my water filter, you know, it's mm-hmm. like I can fill it up. And I watch it slowly go down mm-hmm. and I got to fill that back up. Exactly. But it's still going to give me water. Mm-hmm. But. It's the amount is uh-huh. going to vary. Yeah. And I had to look at myself that way and say, okay, Sarah, it's not all days are going to be hundreds. No. Some days it's, it's beeping and say, fill me up. Yeah. And let's just be real. Some days we are surviving, not thriving. Yeah. That's Okay. If it's one of those that it's easier to get pizza that night or Chick-fil-A or whatever it is, because that's going to make life easy for you, do it. Yeah. Do it. And I used to love Friday nights when I was a kid growing up because we would most of the time get like pizza or do a frozen we pizza. We would do that too. And we would get Now it. I understand why my mom did it. She yeah. was mm-hmm. so tired. Yeah. And so we would get the TV trays out and we would watch TGI Friday. And it was great because it was relaxed, it was chill, and it was like, oh, we all needed that decompression. Yeah. We all needed that ease of a Friday night, and it's like, oh, that's why my mom did that. Mm -hmm. No, I'm like, I see you, mom. I know Mm -hmm. what's happening, and I appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. And so now we have the ability to do that for our kids, too. And you know what? Most of the time, my decompression day is not on Friday. It's usually Wednesdays. It's usually middle of the week craziness. Wednesdays are my later days in the office. So I'm like, you know what? Wednesdays are Chick-fil-A days. Yeah. Because we get to go through the drive-thru. It's easy. My kids love it. We have a variety of things that we can choose to eat from. Okay, cool. Everybody gets what they want and they're happy. Yeah. And that's a win. Oh, absolutely. And now at least because it does get dark so early, everyone has their Christmas lights out too. And so we just drive around looking at Christmas lights while they eat their Chick-fil-A in the car. Why is it dark at four? I don't know. I don't care for that, but my kids love the Christmas lights. Uh, they do. And that's an easy, let's get in the car. Yes. And that's a good suggestion. It's like, if you're in the season, take advantage of the pretty that's out there. It's, you know, yes. put yeah. them in the car seat, you know, depending on your age, give them a little treat in the oh, car yeah. seat, drive around. You play some Christmas music, you oh, hum. Yeah. Humming, we've talked about as a tool to yes. kind of regulate mm-hmm. us. Pop a, a peppermint candy for yourself. Absolutely. Ground mm-hmm. yourself, ladies. Absolutely. And go out and let it, put them in their yes. jammies, make it a fun thing. It doesn't oh, have yeah. to cost anything. I mean, it's oh. gas, but like go a short drive. Oh, yeah. Like our neighborhoods, you know, they're so close together. Put them in the stroller together. if it's warm. Walk them around. Exactly. Our neighborhoods are so close together that for us, we can drive around for 15 minutes or so and see several houses with lights on. And my kids love it. Like once we get home and after we've eaten supper, my two-year-old will go, white? Look at white? Oh, baby James. He, oh, yeah. She's here for it. Baby James loves a good light. He mm-hmm. loves, um, there's some ducks up at our park. Nice. And he screams, quack, quack. I mean, so like if I need to get that child in motion, I'm like, you want to see lights or quack, quack? And he's like running. He's on it. He's running. Yes. So I think it's just to say in this perfectionism pressure of this this season. holiday season, which is worse than I think it's just like it hits it's hard. Holiday it's perfectionism. holiday. Um, and we're talking about marketing ads. We're talking about the algorithm on it's Instagram coming for it us. Down our throats. We're talking about seeing people that we usually don't see and having to put on a facade sometimes. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, they just know you from Facebook or they yeah. just know you from whatever. And it's like mm-hmm. they don't know the day to day. They don't know the struggles. It's just reframe it. Yep. Do your best. Oh yeah. 
realize and again your kids don't know how much things cost exactly so don't do the compare you don't Please have don't. don't compare and i hate this when you see it or they're like oh you're strong and they're like all this money spent or this or that and you're like what if i can't or what if i don't want yeah, to exactly because that's kind of where we're at because our oldest has a birthday three weeks after christmas yeah and again, we have three sets of grandparents. We have extended family. It's a lot. It's a lot. And guess who's putting up the toys? Guess who's decluttering? Yep. Guess who's going to trip over them? Yep. Mom. Us. So it's okay if you don't go big. It's okay if you go to the dollar store for the toys. Because yeah. guess what? Kids don't know the difference. It's okay if you say, I'm given an experience. I'm not. Oh, absolutely. It's okay if you just say, this is where we're at this year. Mm-hmm. So the perfectionism game, we got to let it go. Oh, absolutely. You take those Christmas cards, you go, that looks, they did great. You yeah. put it on your fridge, you put it in your little thing, you move mm-hmm. on with life. Absolutely. And you give them a little cheer and say, I know that mom, Yep. good good for you. She had a unicorn moment. Uh-huh. This moment. ain't a judgment on me. Mm-mm. No. And just reframe it. Absolutely. And just know that, you know, you got to look for what good you are doing. Oh, yeah. Don't, I think perfectionism people talking about myself we fixate on negative to fix negative Mm -hmm. and don't often look at the good and Mm -hmm. say you know what i'm doing great here yeah we're doing what we can we're doing our 4k best that's right you give what you have for that day Mm -hmm. and that's okay moms we're in it with you oh yeah we don't have it all together just really want to lay that out there Mm -hmm. we don't have it all together but we get the honor to share our transparency That's with you right. guys and encourage you. And you know what? We got a couple more weeks. We, we can do this. Deep breath. Deep breath. All right, guys. Till next time. All right. Bye, y'all. Maternal mental health is as important as physical health. The Preview Alliance podcast was created for and by moms dealing with postpartum depression and all its variables like anxiety, anger, and even apathy. Hosted by CEO, founder, Sarah Parkhurst, and licensed clinical social worker, Whitney Gay, each episode focuses on specific issues relevant to pregnancy and postpartum. Join us and hear how other moms have overcome mental health challenges, as well as access tips and suggestions on dealing with your own challenges as moms. You can also browse our podcast library and listen to previous episodes at any time. Please know you're not alone on this journey. We're here to help.